Hello my friend and welcome to another video and thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we are talking about the Roofness Condor XL. This rooftop tent I have behind me here that I've been using for the last few months and I've gotten some really good use out of it. And so I wanted to make this video, this is gonna be a dedicated review of the Roofness Condor as well as a quick guide to setting up and taking down uh, a few of the accessories that go along with the roof nest and how to use them. So thanks for stopping by, let's jump into it. Rock and roll. All right, welcome back. Today, as I mentioned, we are talking about the Roofness Condor XL. I have another video that is on my channel that compares the Roofness brand to the iCamper brand. This is not that video, but if you'd like to check it out, you can click the card up on the top of your screen here to look at that. Today, we're reviewing the Condor XL. I'm gonna walk you through quick setup, quick takedown, and then go through some of the accessories, as well as give you my thoughts on this tent overall and how it's worked for me for the last few months. So without further ado, let's start by setting this thing up and I'll walk you through it. All right, so the first thing you'll notice on these tent is their strap system. You have this kind of ratchet strap here that I'm told is best for security. You wanna use this to just make sure your shell stays in place, not necessarily to crank down on it to get it tight and closed. These are the straps you wanna use for that. You can really leverage these ones by pulling down tight and Velcroing those up when you're closing it to get this shell nice and tight on there. Obviously, you're gonna start with undoing both of these straps on either side. Now that the straps are done, you're ready to push the shell up. If you are vertically challenged, then you may need to stand on the tire to do this. Just give this thing a shove and let it do the work. So as you can see here, the tent has fully opened. There's a strap along the middle. This will be your next step. This just helps to keep all the fabric in and inside when you're closing the tent. So what I usually do is just unhook it from this side and then I'll walk this around to the other side. And then what I normally do is I will uh, take this off to the side and you're hook, it, hook it to my rack. It tends to fall down between the bed and the cab and then I can never reach it. So I like to just hook it here for easy use. So your next step here is gonna be getting the ladder ready. Uh, there's a nice cover that's built in with the Velcro pad here that protects your ladder from scratching up your skylight and your tent material. This is the strap that you're gonna to use to close it when you're putting the tent away. I throw that back and then I roll this one back. And then you have a buckle up here that keeps all the ladder rungs together. You just simply undo the buckle. And then I will show you the most complicated part of this entire process is the ladder. Once you got the hang of it, it's not that bad. All right, so getting the ladder out is how you deploy the second part of the tent and it's the structural support for that fold out piece as well. So this part's important. Uh, it's a telescoping ladder, so all you gotta do is pull on it after you've unbuckled that strap and it'll start to come out. I always, I don't know if you can see me, I'm angled up, but I, I always pull it all the way out first and then I'll use that as leverage to pull out the bottom side of the tent. Simply push down, then you wanna walk forward, grab a higher rung and walk that out. So as you can clearly see here, the ladder is fully extended. That's not gonna be comfortable to sleep in at a 25 degree angle. So you have to get the ladder to level out to support that bottom fold out piece of your tent. And how you do that is by first, there's two tabs on the inside of the rung here that you push inward with your thumbs and that'll start collapsing the ladder like so. You wanna put the ladder at the angle that you're gonna want it at until your piece here is level. And then you simply put a foot on the bottom rung and start to lift up each piece. You'll hear them click into place and they won't go back down. That's how you know they've locked. You go all the way up with each one of those until you're at the top and everything is locked. Now you have a nice sturdy platform for the base of your tent and your ladder is set up and ready to go. And everything is downhill from here. So from here, we're just setting up the rain fly and the awnings and getting everything ready for your campsite for the night. If you remember, you have this ladder cover here. Uh, this one rolls up out of the way. Now that's out of the way. The next thing I do is inside your tent, you're gonna find a few things. Um, and I will walk you through those real quick. Let's just grab them. The first thing you'll find is this long and skinny bag, uh, which houses 
your awning poles. And let me show you how to use those real quick. You'll notice there's little slits in the tent bottom right here, and that's meant for your poles to go through. And there's little holes right there for your awning poles to sink into. These go in at an angle with the hook facing downwards towards the ground. And I'll show you why. Once you have that pole in, it only goes in about an inch. Make sure you do it at an angle or it won't sit properly. You're gonna grab your fly and you'll notice these little grommets right here into your rain fly. And you're simply just gonna bend this back. It's easier if you get a little height on the ladder. Bend this back, put it into the grommet and let the springiness of the pole do the work. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now that you have the front fly and canopy uh, all set up, you're gonna do the same to the tent windows on either side. It's the exact same process. Grab the pole, they go in through these little slits here. That helps keep this skirting around the bottom of the tent anchored in as well if you're running into any kind of weather. Fold it back, put it through. Same thing on the other side. Obviously, whew, hello. I like to stand on the tailgate for this. I drive a full-size pickup truck, so it's a little hard to do this from the ground. So I jump up on here and I do it from there. Okay, so now you can see we have the canopy set up on the front and on the rear of the tent. And you may be asking yourself, but Sam, what about the one over the cab of your truck? Are you gonna set that one up? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you a little issue that we have with these rooftop tents on a full-size pickup truck. All right, so you can see here that I do not have the rear fly set up and there's a reason for that. Notice this gap between the tent and the cab is very tight. These poles are straight, so they don't wanna go in there without hitting the back of your cab. Uh, in fact, I have mine close to the cab for a reason. Um, and I can't get these ones in there. So what I normally do is I'll either roll this all the way up and just bunch it up at the top so it's out of the way, or I will do a single pull. And what I actually do is I put the grommet end in first, right there. I'll stick the grommet in, and then there's a little spot right here on the railing for mounting your tent. And I can kind of bend this right in here, and it just sits there. And at the very least, it'll hold that canopy open on the one side. Um, I am told something that you can do is put this into a vise and bend the degree angle that you need in there to clear the cab. And then you should be able to deploy this canopy on that side. You just have to be able to clear this space right here. I can't endorse that. That's not a roof nest suggested tip. That's just something that I've seen people do and I may be doing that as well so I can use this canopy. All right, so now that we have the canopies fully deployed, I wanna walk you through the other things you'll find inside of the tent. The first thing is these two bags right here. Conveniently comes with the tent, which other brands, not gonna name any names, do not include these, they upcharge for. These came included, which is awesome. Uh, these are your shoe bags and gear bags. They've got spots for you to stick your dirty boots, your dirty shoes at night, and it keeps your shoes right there accessible. You don't have to crawl out of the tent to go find your shoes. They're hanging up, they stay dry. Let me show you how to use these real quick. All right, so to install the shoe bags, there's a Velcro strip right here that holds your rain fly in place. I forgot to mention this, but that just comes undone. If you ever wanted to roll up your rain fly and use the skylight, this is how you would do that. You just undo these uh, Velcros at the bottom, take your poles out, and then roll that all the way back up to the top. Your shoe bag has on either side, See if I can tuck this out of the way here. This is kind of a rubber tubing through the top of this and there's a slotted system right here at the front of the tent. You just feed that in there like this and then your shoe bags hang beautifully right here at the edge of your tent. Uh, when you're taking it out, it can be a little tricky. Keep that bend in there and it'll help feed it right out. If you keep it bent, it'll slide right out, no problems, it won't catch or bind and it won't wear out that fabric right there either. So I usually install both of my bags on either side, that way I just have the space if I need it. And then you wanna redo the Velcro on the bottom for the rain fly on either side. Just goes right there on that strip. And then these have a top flap here. It's really nice. Shoes just drop right in there on either side. You can fit a couple pairs. And if you wanna roll this up out of the way, if you're not worried about weather, you can do that. 
If not, there's Velcro on either side. This will help keep them dry at night, keep the condensation off of them. And if it's raining, they're under your fly here, you're good to go. Okay, and then one of the other things that I think is commonly confused that comes inside the tent is this mat right here. It's a mesh mat. A lot of people think this is a condensation mat, and from what I remember, there's no instructions on what this is used for, but I have clarification from Roof Nest. What this is, is a sand mat that goes underneath your ladder. So what I usually do is I'll just lift this up a little bit, slide that in, straighten it out, now you have a nice spot to step on, put your shoes down here if you want to at night, and the dirt falls right through the mat. You're not tracking it up into the tent. I camp with my two little boys and my wife, and for my two little guys, this thing works great because they're nasty, messy little kids, always tracking in dirt, and so they step out here, take their shoes off, I'll throw them up in the bag, and we all go up into the tent nice and clean. Okay, welcome to the inside of the tent. I apologize, I don't have a super wide lens right now, uh, but I wanted to show you a couple more things that the tent comes with and walk you through it. Uh, the first, in this little bag here, you'll find somewhere inside your tent are these two little guys, and you may be wondering what these are for. What these are, are strut locks. Remember, we talked about the gas struts back here. This is what pushes up and keeps in place the shell of the tent when we opened it. What these are are strut locks. And these simply snap on to the struts right there. In the event that you're camping in wind, that will prevent the, the shell from ever closing on you. Now, I wanna give you a quick disclaimer here. Last week I camped in freezing temperatures. It was in the low teens and we were up on the edge of this rim. In fact, I was shooting a short film for Roof Nest and if you wanna check that out, here's a link to that right there as well. It looks beautiful, but what I did not include in the footage was 50 mile an hour gusts of wind all night long. To be honest, I barely slept and it was very windy. In fact, it was so windy that it was slightly lifting up the floor piece of the tent that folds out under my feet. But I never put these on and our shell was facing into the wind and I will say that this tent held up fantastically well. There was a lot of noise, uh, not the tent's fault, the wind's fault. But all in all, the sturdiness, the structure of the tent, I never felt worried once about it closing on me. It didn't even start to move. The angle that these are set at kind of prevents it from, it would take some really heavy winds. Either way, if you're worried about it and you just prefer the safety of having these installed, you simply put those in right there. And now that shell cannot shut without you taking these out. So don't forget that when you go to close your tent and you're pulling down on that strap to remove your strut locks before doing so, Otherwise, you're gonna have some issues. Right now, we're talking about one of the last features of this tent, and it's honestly probably one of my favorite features. When you open your tent, you're gonna notice this USB cord shooting out of one of the structural poles, and you may wonder what it's for. Well, I will show you. What I like to do is I bring a portable battery bank with me. There's a USB port on this. Plug that bad boy in. And now you have interior lighting. This is fantastic. This is an awesome feature and like I said before, not naming names, but there are a lot of rooftop tent brands that do not include this. You have to do this on your own. Go retrofit lighting and this comes from the factory built in and it's super nice. So let me walk you through the controls real quick and show you what that looks like. All right, so these controls are pretty straightforward here. At the top, you have your power button. This is gonna turn the lights on and off. Right below that, you have a minus button because you can actually dim these lights, which is awesome. So you can dim those down. And then right here, this was the one I was a little confused about. You'll see these two arrows kind of in a circle. What this does is cycle the interior lights with the exterior lights. Yes, there's exterior lights as well that are under the platform. You can choose to either have just your interiors on, just your exteriors on, or both at the same time using that switch. And last but not least is the little plus button this will turn your lights to full brightness. Awesome feature, I've loved using this. It's so convenient with the kids. A lot of the time when we're up camping, we'll just throw the kids up here, let them play, turn the lights on, and they are as happy as can be. It's like their own little Thunderdome. These might be kind of hard to see at night, but you can see the interior lights there. They go across this top bar, and they do a fantastic job of lighting up the entire interior of the tent. 
These are LEDs so they don't get hot. You don't have to worry about them and they're nicely wrapped in plastic against this bar. So you don't have to worry about that coming out or having any issues there either. Awesome, awesome feature. Good job, Roof Nest. The last thing I wanted to do, and again, I apologize, I don't have a super wide angle lens with me. Uh, I wanted to give you an idea of the interior space. And I'm six foot one for reference and I can stretch out long ways in this tent without any issues. I have both headroom and footroom. Let's just go ahead and lay down. Let's get comfy, right? You can see what I normally do is I sleep with my head at this end. I'll tuck my pillow right back in here. I mean, you can scoot all the way up to this and I legitimately still have a foot or a foot and a half at the other end of this. So we typically sleep this way, my wife and I, and then our two boys will either sandwich them in between us or stagger them or whatever that is um, and we have plenty of space again sitting up in here no issues whatsoever you can't see the top right now but i have a foot of clearance up here until i hit my head so a lot of times i'll even get on my knees when i'm getting dressed in the morning and you know like i'm can't see my head but i'm sitting up right now no issues whatsoever uh, the interior space of this is pretty awesome i think it comes out to about 47 square feet of usable space uh, and then of course you have the mattress here this is a um, really comfy mattress has velcro pads on the bottom to keep it in place uh, one thing that i've noticed is condensation most people say to make sure you leave a window cracked at night i've done that even in extreme colds and i still get some condensation inside the tent um, so I'm going to be looking into like a condensation mat or some sort of solution there uh, to help reduce the condensation in the tent. It hasn't been a, a major issue, but it is something, you know, like the tent walls will get a little damp. And that's typical of any tent, uh, especially one that's doing a good job of keeping the heat in as it's, you know, contrasting with the outside air that condensation create, uh, that condensation happens and it's standard for any tent. This mattress has been really comfortable. Um, we've yet to put any toppers on this. We just bring our sleeping bags and blankets and pillows and we sleep directly on this. It's a dense foam mattress uh, and it's really nice. I've had no issues with it. In fact, sometimes I feel like getting out of my regular bed and sleeping on this helps put my back into place. I'm 36 now and I'm getting close to you know, being a senior citizen. So I'm starting to notice back issues and weird things out of place that I never used to notice as a child. And so this thing has done a decent job of keeping me comfy and, and putting everything back in place. So there you have it, guys. That's the interior of the Roof Nest Condor XL. Comfortably sleeps four people. All right, we're gonna go ahead and close out this video by taking down the tent. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. I'll speed a lot of this up so you don't have to watch it. And if there's any little tips along the way for things that I do to make it more simple, I will stop the video and I will include those real quick. So let's get started. We'll take this bad boy down. All right, so there you have it guys. I'm not sure how long that took me because I'm out here doing it live, uh, but I'll put the time up in the screen. Takedown's a little bit slower than putting up for me, but in both cases, you're under five minutes in most situations, which is amazing. We've cut down our camping supplies with this by a ton. And to close out this video, just giving you my final thoughts. The Roof Nest has been an awesome platform. There's a couple things that I really love about it compared to other brands. I have experience with some other brands as well. One of the things, as I mentioned, I'm on a full-size pickup truck. It's the crew cab with a shorter bed. The iCamper, for example, the Sky Camp that sleeps four people, for whatever reason has less interior space, but it's 13 inches longer in the rear. And so on a truck like mine, it hangs over the back and I just think it looks goofy. And it, with The only other solution would be to do a higher bed rack and have it go up over the cab. But with this configuration with the Roof Nest Condor XL, I can put that on my truck bed and it's flush with the end of my bumper and I still fit in my garage with no issues. I keep this garage parked and I love it. And then last but not least, the security and the peace of mind, I guess the simplicity of being able to just get out and go is what I really love about a rooftop tent and why I've enjoyed the roof nest so much. As I mentioned, we camp with our two young boys and my wife, the four of us, 
and the peace of mind is just so nice. We're out here in the desert, obviously, in the summer and even the springtime, we have rattlesnakes and scorpions, little critters. So to be up off the ground is really nice for that reason, to keep your shoes hung up, because as you know, in the desert, scorpions, little things like to crawl into your shoes at night. And then up in the mountains, up in the pines, just if there was ever bears or anything coming into camp, it's nice to be off the ground and be able to hear something and look down on it instead of being face to face with it. Especially with the little ones, that makes a huge difference. And then so far with roof nest, I've just had zero issues. It's a good quality tent, it's well made, it deploys easily, it's put away easily, and I've really enjoyed the platform and especially the added little accessories that come with it. The shoe bags, the lighting, the strut locks, the little sand mat that goes under the ladder are all really nice touches for much less than tents that are comparable in size and sleeps the same amount of people. So I think personally Roof Nest kind of knocked it out of the park with this one uh, to give you the same quality and the same platform for a cheaper price. If you guys want to check it out, there are links in the description below. And of course, if you have any questions about any specifics on this tent that I didn't cover here, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them for you. I respond to every comment and let me know how you're enjoying your roof nest or if you plan to pick one up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Lots more outdoor content like this. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Over and out.